All right, so I'm making this video to review um, the microscope problem uh, to get you to understand the concepts behind a compound microscope. So using this image that Perserin and Brooklyn made for me, uh, I just want you to ima imagine that you have an object over here far away from you and the light is coming in toward your eyeball where you're sitting in front of the screen and the light passes through this lens made by Perserin, right? It's a it's a, a magnifying lens. And the image that you see is now inverted or upside down from what the object was and much larger. And that's basically how magnification works. Now we can also do this yet again with a second magnifying lens to get the image to be even larger. I'm going to show you how to calculate um, information on two different using two different lenses in this video. We're going to use the problem here in the microscope practice problem sheet and it says that an object which in the previous picture was Brooklyn is placed six centimeters in front of a five centimeter focal length lens. Um, I want you to draw a ray diagram to show this and include the object lens and focal point. There's a link here that if you click on it, it's an excellent uh, website that shows you all about rays and ray diagrams. So if you want more information, more very detailed information, you can certainly click on that. Okay, so I'm using this ray diagram that I've uh, created here with Brooklyn as my object right here. That's Brooklyn. As the problem stated, the object or Brooklyn is six centimeters, which at this line is six centimeters long from the lens, which is shown here in light blue. So the object is six centimeters from the lens and the focal point The focal point from the uh, uh, from what the problem states is five centimeters from the lens. So here's the lens. That little dot there is the focal point. Okay, so we have our picture drawn with the lens, the object, and the focal point. That's what the first question asks. And question two asks you to calculate the distance from the lens that the image will appear. So what is this distance from the lens? to the image. What is that distance? We're going to calculate that using the equation that you guys know already, which is 1 over f, the focal point, equals 1 over i, the image distance from lens, plus 1 over o, which is the object distance from lens. So from the first um, equation, we note that um, f F, which is the focal length, equals, whoops, let me make that bigger. F equals um, F equals five centimeters. And O, the object distance, equals six centimeters. That's what the problem told me. So now I have to calculate what does I equal. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. So let's just plug in the numbers uh, based on the, um, um, the equation there. So I'll do that. So 1 over 5 equals 1 over i plus 1 over six. So as you know, algebra students, how to calculate this, you have to get the one over uh, i on one side by itself on the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract one over six from both sides. And I'm going to get one over five minus one over six equals one over i. And then what do I do next? Well, I uh, do the fraction subtraction. So I have to subtract 1 over 5 minus 1 over 6. I have to have the same bottom or common denominator. To get that, I'm going to multiply this 
1 over 5 times 6 over 6. Where did I get the 6? Oh, I got it from right here. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply the other one, 1 over 6, by 5 over 5. Right? When I do that multiplication, I'm going to get 6 times 1 is 6 over 6 times 5 is 30 minus 1 times 5 is 5 over 6 times 5 is 30 equals that equals 1 over i. All right, then to continue, 6, now we can solve this uh, fraction problem here. 6 minus 5 equals 1 and keep the denominator as 30. 1 over 30 equals 1 over i. So what does i equal? Well, since it's just a fraction and a fraction, I could flip both sides. So I could say 30 equals i. There are other ways to figure it out by multiplying both sides by i and then both sides by 30. You can do that too. I'll do that over here. I could multiply both sides by i, which equals i over 30 equals 1, and then multiply both sides by 30, which would be i, because these two cross out, equals 1 times 30 equals 30. So either way you do it, either flipping or multiplying both sides by a, a specific value, um, you get that final answer is i equals 30. So back to our example here, you see that uh, the le distance from the lens to the image that I made by refracting the uh, light through the lens is 30 centimeters away from the lens. And if you count these numbers, I couldn't get a ruler that kept going, but if you count these numbers up here, you'll see that it should be 30 centimeters. Okay, so that's the end of the first section of questions here. Um, so the uh, there's something called a real image and a virtual image. And there are two different types of images. Real images are on opposite sides of the lens and are upside down. Virtual images are on the same side as the lens as your object and they're right side up. So obviously the, in this problem, the image was on the opposite side. We see here the, op the image and the object, the object and the image are on the opposite sides of the lens, which is the blue thing in the middle. So therefore, we know that this image is a real image because it's opposite and um, it's opposite and upside down. Okay, so that's the answer for that question there. If I want to find out how much magnification did I get by doing by using this lens? Um, I can calculate that now using this equation here. So the magnification, how much bigger is my image than my original uh, object? I could either calculate it by dividing the image distance by the object distance, or I could calculate it by dividing the image height by the object height. Well, as uh, in this problem, um, actually this problem number five asks, which of the two variables do I have? I actually have the object distance and the image distance. The object distance um, was given to me in problem one, and the image distance I just calculated in the last problem. So uh, those are the values I have. Really, I don't know what the height of this is and what the height of Brooklyn is. I don't have that information right now, but I do have the others. So I can calculate for question number six. I can calculate uh, the magnification by doing the image distance, uh, which is 30 centimeters, as we stated above, and the object distance is six centimeters. 
Um, so 30 divided by 6, my centimeters both cancel out, is 5. So the magnification of this lens, this lens here, is 5. So this image should be 5 times uh, bigger than this object. You made it through the first section, which is about a single uh, lens calculation. And so here is a short video for you to watch and enjoy. Okay, this is a continuing video from the last one. Um, this is going to be about a compound microscope uh, lens system. So we started the previous video with one lens, which is Perserin here, and we have an object on the uh, far away, and then the image is near our eye here, and that's with one lens. But when we have a second lens, we're going to magnify the object even further. And this is what happens in the microscopes you guys have used at school. And this is what happens in the microscopes that you are going to be building. So um, the question in the uh, microscope practice problem sheet says, in a compound microscope, compound means there's more than one lens, the separation distance between a five centimeter focal length objective lens, so the one that we've been using, and an eyepiece lens, which happens to be a 10 centimeter focal length, the distance between those two lenses is 39 centimeters. So um, it asks you to draw a diagram showing the objective lens, the eyepiece lens, and also list the uh, focal lengths of each of the lenses. So using our um, same image as we did before, here is the object and the objective lens. Remember, the objective lens is the one that's closest to the object. And then here is the eyepiece lens over here. And the distance between these two, um, right here, this distance right here between the two should be 39 centimeters. Okay? So, um, and that's what we have to draw so far. We have the object, the image, and the distance. You remember from before, the you calculated that the distance um, between the first, oopsies, the first lens, the distance between the first lens and the image, this one, this is from the first problem, this distance here, that's 30 centimeters. I should write it here. This distance here is 30 centimeters. This distance between the two lenses is actually, this distance is 39 centimeters, okay? So that's what that question is asking you to draw. Then as we scroll down, this question, describe where the image formed by the objective lens is located in relation to the front focal point of the um, eyepiece lens. Okay, so um, remember in, from the question that it said that the focal length of the eyepiece lens here is 10 centimeters. So I drew a little dot. I don't know if you can see this little dot right there. But I drew that 10 centimeters in front of this eyepiece lens. So this guy here, did I, did I write it? This guy there is actually, this one here is 10 centimeters. All right. Okay. And then from our first um, question, you know that the distance between this first lens and the focal point is actually five centimeters. And I'll make this big so you can see it better. Okay, so that's the f first focal length is five centimeters and the eyepiece length is 10 centimeters. Whoops, 10 centimeters actually should go out to there, right? So I'm gonna say that Brooklyn is actually, if you took the middle of her head, 
she's actually located right here, um, which is one centimeter in, this is where Brooklyn is, one centimeter in from the focal point. Hard to tell because this image is wide, but the she's a little bit closer to the eyepiece lens than this focal point. Okay, so that answers question eight. Describe where the image is uh, in relation to the eyepiece lens. So um, Brooklyn, the image, the image is one centimeter closer to the eyepiece lens than the eyepiece focal point. Hopefully in this image you could see that. Here's the focal point, here's the image, and then here's the eyepiece lens. So the image is a little bit closer to the eyepiece lens than the focal point. Um, so now question nine wants us to do more calculations of um, where the new image is going to be. So here's the deal. Here's my lens that I'm going to be concerned with. I'm going to use this image, this magnified image of Brooklyn as my new object. So how much bigger can this lens make this thing? If I, you know, just basically I'm doing the same thing as I did here to make it bigger from here to here, but I'm going to make this one bigger now, like double the bigness of the, of the original object. Okay, so to calculate the uh, uh, image, distance um, in uh, this scenario. Here's my lens. Here's my focal point to this lens, which is the focal length is 10 centimeters, you remember. Um, my object distance, because I'm going to use this thing here as my object, right? Even though it's an image, I'm going to use it for my object of this uh, uh, eyepiece lens. This is 9 centimeters. Um, those two those two pieces of information are kind of given in the problem. So I'm going to write this here. So my focal length of the lens is 10 centimeters. This is of my eyepiece lens. And again, if I look at this picture, if this is 10 centimeters, my image distance is nine centimeters. How did I get nine? I took the 39 centimeters, which is the distance between these two lenses, and I subtracted 30 centimeters, which is the distance from the first lens to the image. This, that means that this distance here has to be nine centimeters. So my object length here is O equals nine centimeters. Oops, centimeters. So using this same um, equation again, I am going to uh, calculate I. So it's the very same thing as you guys did before um, in the first problem, no difference at all. So here I go. So um, one over 10 this time, because my focal length is 10, equals one over I, which I'm trying to find, plus 1 over O, which is 9. This is a plus sign here. Same thing as I did before. I just subtracted the 1 over 9, right? Oopsies. <coughs> Subtract the 1 over 9 from both sides. So 1 over 10 minus 1 over 9 equals that equals 1 over I because I subtracted 1 over 9 over 109. Okay, now how can I solve this? Again, I have to have the same denominator, the same bottom. So I'm going to multiply this 1 over 10 times 9 over 9. I'm going to multiply this times 10 over 10, right? So 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 10 is 90. So that's 9 over 90, minus 1 times 10 is 10, 9 times 10 is 90, that equals 1 over i. Forgot to change my colors there. Okay, so then if I keep going with this, um, I will subtract, 
9 minus 10 equals negative 1 over, keeping my denominator, 90 equals 1 over i. And just like in the last problem, uh, if I want to find what i equals, I can either multiply both sides by i and then both sides by 90, or I can um, just flip both sides. So I, if I flipped both sides, I'll get negative 90 over 1 equals i over 1, or negative 90 equals i. Okay, so this is the answer for how far away the image of your eyepiece lens is going to be. So if I were to draw this, it would look like this. So this is was our original right here. You can see our original object. And then we magnified it through the objective lens to get a bigger image, right? Then we took another lens and magnified this image even farther to get a um, final image. Look how much bigger we did. Well, you guys know that if you want to see a cell, you have to have about a hundred times magnification. I don't know that I don't know if this is a hundred times or not, but it's quite a bit of magnification. So, and as you guys know, um, electron microscopes can get a million times magnification. So that means that the uh, bigness of this image is going to be over a million times bigger than the object, right? So. Um, multiple lenses, if I even had a further lens, I would could, you know, maybe even make it bigger. So um, actually that's probably not true, but um, this is how a compound microscope with two lenses basically works. Where are our questions? Let's see. So we calculated that this image is the image real or virtual. Um, as the, if you look back at the definition, if the object of your lens is on the same side as the image that it's created. That image, it will be considered vir virtual. So this is a virtual image. Okay, so um, because it's a virtual image, they typically use this estimation for um, the magnification. So the magnification of the eyepiece lens, magnification of the eyepiece lens, the estimation is 25 centimeters divided by the focal length of the eyepiece lens, which we said was 10 centimeters. So that equals 2.5 times magnification. And as you guys learned by doing your research notes, um, the overall magnification of the microscope, so the magnification of the microscope, equals the magnification of the eyepiece lens, which we just calculated was 2.5, times the magnification of the objective lens, which way back here in the first video, um, we said was five times. Okay, so down here I'm gonna say times five. 2.5 times five equals 12.5, so 12.5. So the overall magnification that we had with a five centimeter focal length objective lens and a 10 centimeter focal length eyepiece lens, the overall magnification of this particular microscope is calculated to be 12.5 times. All right. Um, the question 13 asks you to quickly draw a diagram for an object greater than two focal lengths. And rather than actually do that, if you click on the link there, there is a good picture of that here. Um, okay, you, this is a nice one. So here's the object. 
the object is more than two and a half focal lengths away from the lens and here's the image that's calculated from it. You can see the object is this big, the image is only this big. So where that's getting at is if you have your sample here, right, your microscope slide here, and your objective lens is too far away from that object, you're actually going to have an image that's smaller instead of bigger. So the placement of your sample and your lenses, especially your objective lens, is very, very important. And that's what that question is trying to make sure that you're aware of. Um, you already did this vocabulary in your research notes. Um, this is a good one. Um, how does the focal length relate to the magnification power of the, the compound microscope section? So now please enjoy these images. Okay, this is part three of the video series, I guess. The last few questions on this uh, microscope practice problem sheet. Um, I just want to go over them quickly. <clears throat> so number 13 says, draw a ray diagram for an object greater than two focal lengths from the lens. So if we click on this um, uh, link here, we go to this really good um, website, um, that talks about ray diagrams, and it's from um, here. It is uh, the physics classroom, and uh, I can easily show you some um, diagrams here that shows uh, what uh, what the size of your image will be based on where you are in uh, compared to the focal lengths. So we see here, if you're two focal lengths away from the lens, then your image is going to be about the same size as your object. So you're not magnifying it at all. If you're between one and two focal lengths away from the lens, your image will be larger than your object. In both cases, they're real images, they're upside down, but the size is bigger if you're between one and two focal lengths, and we've already covered that. And um, lastly, uh, if your object is farther away than two focal lengths from the lens, so see how this is one and two focal lengths, your object is farther away than that, the image that's gonna be created is gonna be actually smaller than the original object. So for a magnifying glass or for a microscope, that is not what we want. So basically, the information that you need to know is your sample, your slide, needs to be between one and two focal lengths of your objective lens. Um, and question 14 says, how does the focal length relate to the magnification power of the lens? <clears throat> so if you go to the resource that's linked on the page, you'll see that the... Uh, as the focal length gets smaller, your magnification gets larger. So the smaller the focal length, the larger the magnification. Um, and also, therefore, the closer the sample has to be to the objective lens. I wanted to show one last thing. <clears throat> this is... Um, Right here, this is the ray diagram that we've been working on. You can recall that we have the object right here, which is Brooklyn. She's upright going to the left. And the magnification from the objective lens here makes her this big. Okay. And then we used an eyepiece lens right here to magnify this even more. And here's the magnification we got, uh, the, second the second magnification using the second lens. 
So this base, this ray diagram that we created here is basically the same thing as what you would see in the actual microscope. So an actual real professional microscope, you have the stage here where you put your, your object or your sample. Then you have your first uh, lens here, which is the objective lens right here. And the rays of light are going uh, up through the sample, they're being bent by the objective lens. Then you have an image here in the body tube. The eyepiece lens up here will take that image right here and will uh, magnify it even further using, uh, and the magnified image of this will be a virtual image right here that's much bigger. And you put your eye right here where our eye was over here on this one. And you put your eye right here and what you'll ultimately see instead of a little tiny uh, object you'll see a much magnified final image and that's basically how microscopes work so again when you're creating your microscopes you're going to have two lenses uh, a regular microscope objective lens and eyepiece lens and your sample stage will be here and again the higher the magnification the closer the sample stage needs to be to the objective lens. The distance between the objective and eyepiece lens has to be just right so that we can see this image and then further magnify it in order for you to get a final working microscope. Okay, so that's everything. I know it's been long and congratulations for going, getting through all of it.